The Fusion 360 team has released a new update to Fusion in August, and as part of that update comes long-anticipated sheet metal tools. Let's take a look at the sheet metal tools and a workflow to go ahead and use those. The first thing I want to do with my design is to save it. So I'm going to choose the save icon and I'm going to call this FF sheet metal and go ahead and save that design. The next thing I'm going to do is create a component. So I'm going to right click and choose new component, double click on the component name and I'm going to name my component widget and go ahead and hit enter. To access the sheet metal commands, we're going to enter a new workspace called sheet metal. So where it says model, I'm going to click on the drop down and find sheet metal. Go ahead and choose sheet metal. And now our toolbar up here will give us some sheet metal options. We're going to create some flanges and there's three different types of flanges we're going to create in this example. We're going to create face flanges, we're going to create edge flanges, and we're going to create a contour flange. So the first flange I want to work on is the face flange. So from the sketch menu, I want to choose rectangle, center point rectangle, and sketch on the top plane. I'm going to drag out a rectangle, and I want this rectangle to be 9 inches long by 6 inches wide. Remember to switch between the dimensions, I'm just clicking the tab key to jump back and forth between them. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and stop the sketch. I'm going to click on the home button. I'm going to choose the flange command and select the region that I want to create my flange out of. Now notice that nowhere on the screen is Fusion asking me for the thickness of this flange. The thickness of the flange is dictated by a rule and in a minute we're going to look at creating our own rule and setting the properties of that rule. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Now that I have the base flange created, I want to add some edge flanges to it. So I'm going to choose the flange command again and in this case I'm going to select the four edges of my rectangle. I'm going to pull up. I want my flanges one inch in height and you can also note we can set the rotation angle and as we rotate in or out notice how the flanges stay mitered to each other. In my example I want the flange edges to be at 90 degrees so I'll set it to 90 and then click OK. I'm going to create some more edge flanges. I'm going to select these two edges, drag my arrow out. I again want these to be 90 degrees, but 0.75 inches in height. Again, as I select both flanges at the same time, notice that Fusion auto miters the corners for me. Go ahead and click OK. I'm going to create another set of edge flanges, this time internally. So I'm going to select that edge and that edge, drag my rectangle in, and for the height, I'm also going to make these 0.75. And again, notice the automatic miter that's applied. And I will click OK here. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a contour flange. So to do that, I'm going to rotate around and I want to put a sketch on this flat face. So I'm going to sketch a line on this face, starting at that endpoint. I want the line to be roughly one inch long. I'm going to do D for dimension, select the line, enter 1 inch for an aligned dimension, and this edge I would like to be 0.5 inches. I'm going to grab an angular dimension by clicking on that edge and this edge of my sketch and typing in 135. That now creates the contour flange that I'm going to do next. I'm going to stop the sketch, rotate around a little bit. Again, I'm going to choose the flange command and select the sketch. Instead of inputting the length this time, I'm going to use the edge of one of the flanges that I've already created. Notice when I do that, it automatically joins the flange to the existing flange, and it adds the appropriate radii where it needs to. So I'll go ahead and click OK, and there's my, my contour flange that's been created. Normally what we would do if we'd want to put a cut in something like this is we'd, we'd sketch a rectangle and extrude it. And if we do that, that's not going to give us exactly the result we want. So let's go ahead and choose to create a sketch on this face. And I'm going to sketch a rectangle, two-point rectangle. Now just to demonstrate this, I'm not going to define it in place, but we'll go ahead and stop the sketch. I'm going to extrude this. I just want to make sure I pull it all the way through. The problem with, the problem with doing it this way is that I'm not going to get a perpendicular face 
To prove that, we'll go from the Modify menu and we'll create a flat pattern. So I'm going to say Create Flat Pattern and choose the face that I want to be the top of my flat pattern. Click on that and go ahead and click OK. And now Fusion will unfold everything. From this side, it looks like everything is good. But when I rotate this over and look at it from a bottom view, you can see there's a chamfered edge. And when we cut with a laser, water jet, plasma, we're not going to get those chamfered edges like that. So let's take a look at the proper way to do this. I'll delete my extrusion, and I'm going to delete my sketch. We're going to use another modification tool called Unfold. So I'm going to choose Unfold, and I want to choose the stationary face that I don't want to move. I'm going to click on that face, and it's going to automatically unfold all the bends, and now I can click OK. I'm going to sketch that same two-point rectangle on that face, and I'll just drag it out give it some dimensions. Let's call this 1.5. I'd like it to be 0.5 away from that edge. And in width, let's make it an inch and a quarter. And I'd like to center it. I'm going to use a constraint to do that. So I'll use my horizontal vertical constraint between my origin, hold my shift button down, and Fusion will find the midpoint of that edge. Now we have that fully defined in place. I'm going to stop the sketch, rotate over, and now I can use my extrude command. So from the create extrude, grab the regions that I'd like to extrude and pull them through. I'll say distance of all and click OK. Now I have my cut placed. What I'm going to do is choose to refold the faces. So now we have that same cut placed back in there. But this time when I switch to the flat pattern view, by expanding this out, going to the flat pattern and activating it, you can see that no longer do we have any chamfered edges on our cut through. So I'll exit the flat. I'm going to create another edge flange by selecting the flange tool. And this time I'm going to click on this face right here and pull that up. I'm going to give it a height of 0.5. And instead of using the entire edge, I want to say that it's a symmetric cut, a symmetric flange, I should say, of 0.5 inches thick. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And there's another flange that's been added to our part. If I again switch back to the flat pattern view, you can see that the flat pattern now updates and accounts for that, that flange. Exit out and go back to our, our solid model. We can also use some of the tools to round over corners. So I would like to, from the modify menu, add some fillets and let's round over some of the corners that we have in our design. So I'm going to select that edge and that edge, maybe that edge. And we'll grab that one and that one. It's going to pull it in and give it a value of 0.25 and click OK. So there we have a sheet metal design. We can we can alternate between the folded and the flat pattern. So there's what our flat pattern would look like. If I expand out the bodies, you can see that we can turn on and off the center lines and on and off the extent lines or the bend lines altogether. Turn those back on and exit the flat. So now I can go ahead and make a drawing. So from the sheet metal drop down, I'm now going to say drawing from design. I don't want to do my full assembly. I want to uncheck that and say, I just want to make a drawing of that part. I can choose if I want to choose the folded model or the flat pattern. So in this case, let's go ahead and do the flat and I will choose. Okay. That'll fire fusion off into the drawing environment and normal commands here. Let's put one in at 0.5 scale and I'll go ahead and drop that view on the paper and click OK. Now what I can do is I can create a bend table. So I'm going to choose table, apply this up in the upper right hand corner, and it'll go through and automatically number all my bends for me. If I don't like the placement of a bend, I can click on the number, grab the grip, and move it around, and an arrow will appear showing me what this particular bend line is pointing to. 
Let's switch back to our folded model and talk about sheet metal rules. So here we are back in the folded model and you can see that the rule that we're using is called steel mm for this particular file. So what I want to do is I want to use a different rule. I'm going to cre create a new rule and switch the rule. So from the modify menu, let's choose sheet metal rules. Go to our library and the sheet metal rule that I want to start from is going to be the steel inch. I'm going to right click on that and say new rule. Doing this copies the rule and that is our starting point. So the rule that I want to make is going to be called NYC CNC steel round. We have the thickness of the material. So in this case it's going to be 0.1 inches thick. The K factor is going to be 0.44. The K factor refers to the part of the material above the bend line or below the bend line where it either compresses or stretches. That's a ratio between the material thickness and where that line lies. And what I want to change here is in the bend conditions. So the release shape that I want to do on this one is going to be round. That's good. And on the two bend intersection, we're going to choose round here as well. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now we have a rule called NYC CNC steel round. We'll go ahead and close that. If we come down and look at our corner condition, it's kind of ugly right there with the way that these are matching up. So let's go ahead and try our new rule and see if that fixes things a little bit. So we'll find a rule and we'll go ahead and click on the switch rule button. Go through and look through our library and now we'll see the NYC CNC steel round. Click OK. And now we'll notice that those corners have a nice round corner relief applied to them. If we switch over to our flat pattern, you'll see that those changes are updated in our flat pattern as well. I'll exit the flat. And the final thing we can do with this drawing is maybe we don't want to create a drawing of this at all. We just want to cut it out on a plasma laser water jet machine. And to do so, we can switch over to the cam environment, activate the flat pattern. We can create a setup and use the cutting tools to cut these out. So hopefully this gave you a better introduction on how to use the sheet metal tools. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and we'll do our best to address them. Thank you.